is necessary to ensure that you are cultivating a healthy environment for the native flora and fauna and keeping your pond looking as nice as possible. The first thing you'll want to do is take an assessment of what is already in and around your pond. The pond on East Campus has three turtles and occasionally has some ducks that nest here. There is also an array of native and non-native plant material that prefers wet conditions and helps with runoff. Some of these plants are cattails, a dwarf ginkgo, dwarf Japanese white pine, alliums, liatris, goldenrod, sedums, switchgrass, penstemon, sedges, and amsonia. You will also want to check for drainage or blockage issues. It's important to clean debris out of the drain frequently to ensure that the pond has proper circulation. Assessing what is already present can help in making recommendations in the future. It is also important to remember that not all algae growth is bad. Sometimes it is exactly what your pond needs. Just make sure to monitor what is growing in and around your pond and to take action once something becomes invasive. It is also important to calculate your pond surface area if you ever need to apply fungicides, algicides, or do any sort of water treatment. To calculate the surface area, I measured the length and width, which came out to 4.08 meters long and 1.82 meters wide. Since this is an irregularly shaped pond, I placed the pond within a rectangle and measured the sides. I then multiplied 4.1 meters times 2 meters times 0.9 and got 7.38 meters squared. Next, you'll want to check the water quality of your pond. A pH level of 6 to 6.9 is ideal for turtles as it helps to slow down bacteria and fungi growth that might harm these little critters. You can purchase pH test strips from almost any pet or swimming pool store. Excess levels of nitrate and phosphorus are also something to look out for, as it can lead to nuisance plant growth. You can test these levels with a water testing kit, or you can send your pond water to a water testing lab. It's best if you test your water quality once a week if it's a new pond, and once a month after it's established. It's also important to test your water quality at the same time of day, since pH, nitrate, and phosphorus levels can fluctuate throughout the day. It is also important to consider any additional sediments or nutrients entering the pond. Considering buffer strips or adding plant material can help control nutrient runoff and stop unwanted sediments from entering your pond. The pond here is surrounded by natural stone and marginal pond plants. At the bottom of the pond, we also have native plants that prefer wet conditions that can help with runoff and keep nutrients cycling through the pond. Doing a regular inspection on your pond liner and checking for any leaks is also beneficial. Winter or early spring is a great time to make a checklist and see what maintenance needs to be done on your pond. This will ensure that your pond will look fabulous all summer long. Doing an initial assessment, calculating surface area, testing water quality, and considering additional sediment input and nutrient runoff is a great start to managing your pond. Keeping a regular maintenance schedule will keep you happy and your pond and wildlife healthy. Thank you again for joining us today on Front Yard Gardener.